Hi, my name is Patrick and welcome to the Good Data channel. In today's video, I am going to introduce you to an exciting new feature called Last Mile ETL. Picture this. Uh, you have a database with all the information you need, but it's not structured in the way that's ideal for your analytics. Maybe you have coordinates that uh, need to be separated into latitude and longitude, or you have values in different formats or types. You might even come across tables with less than ideal designs. Traditionally, you would have to constantly switch between your ELT or ETL pipeline and your analytics, making edits to the scripts to transform uh, the data into desired shape during the transformation phase. It's a common experience in our industry, but does it have to be this way? That's where a last mile ETL comes in. It changed the data transformation process by allowing you to do everything in one tool. Let's discover the last mile ETL by exploratory analytics. Let's say we have just three tables with data, as you can see on the screen. And we would like to explore it and learn some facts based on this data. It means that instead of one concrete goal to achieve, we will primarily try to explore some value in this data. You can see that the uh, coordinates are in one column called coordinates instead of latitude and longitude, or value uh, in the GDP is text rather than numeric. We can address these issues with the help of last mile ETL inside the analytics. What you can, you can see on the screen are datasets. We can map a dataset to a so-called SQL query. Uh, it gives us the possibility to write SQL queries that are executed directly in the database. Let's just check what types of airports we have in the database. It seems that the airports table contains several types of airports, such as heliports or even closed airports. Let's say that I am interested just in the medium and large airports. It's not a problem at all. I don't need to go to the ELT or ETL pipeline. I simply create a new SQL uh, dataset called airports transform directly in the analytics. You can see that I can do it with quite a simple SQL query and it works fine. Unfortunately, there is one more problem we need to solve. The coordinates are not in the format we need for analytics. We need to break this column into longitude and latitude to render a geochart. Let's edit the airports transform dataset. Fine, it works. Now we would be prepared to render a geochart. As this was quite simple, let's explore something more valuable. What is the correlation between GDP and the number of airports in a country? The bad news is that the airports table does not have the full country names, for example Albania, but only ISO codes of countries. On the other hand, the GDP table does not have ISO codes, but only has the full name of the country. Sadly, there is one more issue with the column value. It doesn't have the correct type and format. Let's solve the mention problem with a new SQL dataset and simple SQL. Perfect. Both of the SQL datasets now contain ISO codes and we can simply join them based on these ISO codes. Also, 
we can remove the other datasets as they do not have any value for us right now. Let's move to the Analyze tab to find out the correlation between uh, GDP and the number of airports in the country. First of all, uh, we need to calculate the number of airports in the country. It's uh, done with the help of the Muckle language that is very good at calculating metrics. I will put a link to the uh, documentation of Muckle to the video description. Now let's calculate the first metric. Let's calculate it number of airports and save it. The last step is to calculate the correlation between GDP and the number of airports in the country. Cool, everything works and you can see the result on the screen. Together we explored what the last mile ETL is and how you can benefit from it. You can do everything in analytics which means no contact switching. It also has huge security benefits. You do not have to have access to the database but even though you can do simple changes within analytics. Another benefit is the iterativity, meaning uh, you can start with something simple and then iterate to more complex results. Last but not least, thanks to Good Data Analytics as code approach, you can easily version everything in Git and apply the best uh, software engineering practices in analytics. Do you want to try it on your own? You are more than welcome. You can register your trial account and try it today. I will put a link to the video description. Thanks for watching.